Hey everybody, welcome to episode 40 of the GVG cast. I'm your host for today, Ash Paulson, and I'm joined as always by my very good friend and GVG co-founder, Steve Bowling, as well as my also very good friend and our amazing art director, Daniel Alba. How's it going, guys? Hello. Hey. Hey, happy Friday, man. It's going good. It's going good. Uh, it's been a week. <laughs> but uh, I say that like every. I feel like we I always like. say that. I also feel um, like I need to tone down my energy because I'm like, hey guys, yeah, let's go, go. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, it's, yeah. it's a little mellow. <laughs> Chill out, dude. Um, yeah. No, it's it's been it's been good. Uh, you know, I've been not playing a lot of 2023 stuff, which I guess there isn't a lot of 2023 stuff. But no, I've been trying you. to make a concerted effort to play games that are coming out, like as they're coming out, because <clears> I know. That right. we are precisely one week away from Engage coming out, and then my backlog is going to build. Yeah, there's Fire Emblem Engage coming out. There's Forspoken, which I want to be good. It might uh, not be. Yeah. Then uh, next sorry. next month, the big one for me, Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line, which is going to destroy destroy what little free time I have. I can't wait. Um, but I am back from MAGFest. I wasn't here last, uh, last yeah, week. I was great. at MAGFest. And Steve, don't think I didn't see your intro. I was not, in fact, doing illegal drugs. Why? Day. Why weren't you? <laughs> well, unless we're living in the Prohibition era again. Uh, I, I did quite a bit of drinking. But other than that, uh, yeah, no, just had what such an amazing time. And I'm going to drag you guys there some someday. One of these years. I, I'm going to really drag you guys there. I want to go. Like, I, I just feel like holding any type of con in January is, is I get it. mean spirited <laughs> because I, get it. I, yeah. I go home, I visit family. Then I just get home and they're like, Hey, things are happening. Leave your house again. And I'm like, I was just gone it's for like 14 <laughs> days. I, I want to be home now. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's a tough time to have a convention. It, like for me and, and my wife, it's like our kind of annual post new year's trip that we look forward to. She has a good time there too. We have a bunch of friends that we go with every year, but I mean, it, it is really the only place in the known universe that I that I can think of where you can party with friends for four days straight and wake up each morning to a string quartet playing Zelda or Undertale or Chrono Trigger music in the hotel lobby. It is just the most magical place on earth if you love video game music like I do. So it is amazing. It is, it's such an amazing time. And anybody who's been to MAG out there, you know what I'm talking about. It is such, such a fun time. Oh, I would, yeah, I, I would love to go. Oh, sorry, Daniel, go ahead. I still haven't been over to MAGFest. It feels like no matter what I do during this time of year, I'm always doing something or I'm somewhere. Like during this time, I was over with Brandon for like a week over uh, over New Year's. And uh, yeah, I heard you were over there during that weekend that I was coming back just this week. So it always sounds so much fun. I always get FOMO for, for MAGFest in particular. I haven't, I haven't experienced that quite yet. I know all these other content creators, all our friends are always out going and having a good time. So, man... I uh I just spent this week trying to to catch back up with myself, uh, getting things going with a video I'm trying to do, because next week will be really busy, busy with getting that done. Fire Emblem comes out, uh, it's gonna it's gonna pick up from there. But but yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I, I'm sad I missed out on the first GVG cast of the year. But at least we're, we're me all too together now. <laughs> but what you're saying, Daniel, is, is I wasn't even that far from you and Brandon, and neither of you could be asked to come meet me at at uh magfest i see how it is i had i had a lot of pokemon to watch we ah are, fair enough we're, we're doing the um, other ash <laughs> we i was hanging with the other ash for a lot of that time uh -huh. yeah. um we me brandon and john uh we're gonna be commenting on the uh the little send-off series for ash and pikachu it just it just aired really early for the am over here on the on pacific coast uh, I think subs are starting to come out, so we're going to be commenting on those every week. We're going to have a little discussion on those. So nice. uh, we're just catching ourselves up, and um, that's going to probably be very emotional because a lot of us just grew up with that, well, with those characters. And uh, yeah. Right. I, I, I really want to see that series. Um, Me too. Like, mm -hmm. as someone who was around for the original run of the, uh, when, when the anime debuted on, on North American Airwaves, it, it I feel like despite the fact that I clearly didn't keep up with the anime through like all the decades that it's been running, I, I think I still feel like an emotional attachment to the original, you know, to Ash and, and like the character himself. And I'd love to, I, I really want to see what they're doing with him. To right. Like send him off. Same, same. Um, I, I see Becca in, in our live audience chat is saying nothing is stopping me next year. Yeah, I know you were supposed to come this year and you couldn't unfortunately last second, but I will see you there next year. I can't wait. Uh, also, we've got a couple of people with Taniac and Moon Rota saying Daniel's a little bit low. 
Oh, okay. Uh, Daniel is on a new mic, so ah, let me right. let me bump you up, Daniel, because I did have you at your at your blue yeti levels. <clears throat> so and uh, yeah. cornflakes. To answer your question, I typically prefer the symphonic and jazz arrangements, but I, I do love me a good rock and metal concert as well. We we got to see the Super Soul Brothers live, which was amazing. Uh, the Videri String Quartet, uh, and I got to I got to catch up with my good friend or our good friend T Lopes. Uh, he was there, and we got to hang out for like an hour and just chat video game music and let me tell you that is a chat that i literally could have had all night I, I i didn't want it to end it was amazing doing a deep dive chat uh about video game music with the man himself um and he he joined the server he joined gvg's discord server which is super cool and i'm thinking if he's down for it we got to get him uh on an episode of gvg cast as a special guest i think that'd be yeah a lot of absolutely fun. yeah well something we also got to do is shout out our amazing sponsor the game orb the Game Orb is a YouTube channel that brings commentary and gameplay footage from the Nintendo Switch and Xbox Series X gaming systems. While games like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu can be seen on the channel along with others, the Game Orb will also now be adding Splatoon 3, Super Mario Sunshine, and Fall Guys to the gaming collection. So be sure to subscribe to the Game Orb at the link in the description. And of course, I've also pinned a link to his channel uh, in our YouTube chat as well. So please do, as I always say, show the game orb all the love you can because he has been sponsoring us and supporting us from the very beginning of gvg so thank you so much yeah uh, game absolutely orb. yeah thank you uh, also thank you so much to my wife and parents so steve i gotta say man you were right so i i was still kind of hemming and hawing on getting a switch oled because i'm like is it worth it this late into the switch's life cycle and my wife and my parents uh conspired to make that decision for me and so for the holidays they surprised me with a Splatoon 3 Swoled, which, God, oh, I love yeah. that. Th that Joy-Con design is, they're so nice. It is nice. so good, right? Oh, it's so good. And so that screen, you were right, man. I have been playing more on handheld mode lately just to take in that glorious screen. And I've been playing, like, Smash on various stages and, like, all the Mario Kart tracks just to, it's so pretty. Oh, it's yeah. So it pops so much. It's one of those things where the platform we're on, of course, being YouTube, like limits your ability to really deliver accurate, like to deliver how impressive something like that is. Because when we reviewed the OLED on this channel, I was watching the footage and I was like, it just doesn't do it justice. Like it's right. hard to show something and be like, trust me, it looks way better when you see it in person. Uh, yeah. But that's really what happens because you can't accurately reproduce like the depth of color that, that that screen can, can produce, you know, through a camera lens into YouTube on whatever display the person's watching it on. So uh, yeah. yeah, it really does wonders. Uh, I particularly love games with a lot of darkness in them because that really like, shows kind of the contrast that that screen sure. is capable of hollow Knight, metroid dread look incredible yeah. or one of my favorites is playing rainbow road and mario kart 8 deluxe on, on okay on i the haven't Swole gotten there screen. yet that is that is a trip like it looks okay. so good i'm looking forward to that and uh, a buddy of mine is actually or one of my one of my best buds is currently borrowing my copy of metroid dread so i have not been able to play it yet on the swole but that's one of the first things i'm doing when i get it back from it so I can't wait to do that. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of my, uh, what, you know, what I've been up to lately on the gaming side of things. Although I did, it's funny, Steve, you mentioned uh, playing 2023 games and there aren't that many of those yet to do that with. I'm still trying to finish Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but I did finish a game last night. I'm a little bit late to this party, but I did finish the Splatoon 3 campaign last night. Oh, wow. And of course, yeah, and I won't go into, I, I, I had been at Site 6 for like weeks because I, I got sidetracked by, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And uh, and so but I finally went back to it and finished it. And man, no spoilers, of course, but what a finale. This the scope and the stakes were incredible. And uh, gameplay wise, I think I still prefer Splatoon 1's final boss. But man, what a cool ending to that trilogy, as they're calling it. I guess the next one is going to be the start of a new story arc or whatever. But yeah. uh, man, what a cool finale that was. And I can't wait for the expansion. Yeah, exactly. I think the expansion is going to be really good. Um, I think a lot of people forget that some of Splatoon 2's best moments were in Octo expansion. They so were. I'm they excited really to see were. what they do with the DLC mm -hmm. for Splatoon. Hell yeah. Uh, anything else you guys have been playing lately before we uh, move on to some Super Chats? Uh, I actually did the reverse of you. I picked up Xenoblade last night and started playing it again. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. So I'm I'm trying to beat it before Fire Emblem because I have a feeling once Fire Emblem gets here... Uh, then 
that's going to take up a lot of my time and I won't uh. go back for Zen. Like that might be the final nail in Xenoblade's coffin if I don't finish it because uh, I had yeah. an issue with three houses. Like I loved three houses and I played through one route and I, I kicked myself constantly for not going back and playing the other routes. So I think this time with Engage, I'm going to try to get more time in. Okay. And and that's tough. Um, I'm, I'm already in chapter five on Xenoblade, so I should oh, be able okay. to beat it in, in a week. That's my hope. So you're 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 quite a quite a ways in oh, there. Well, God. my friend, you are coming up on uh, one of the best parts of any Xenoblade game ever. Oh boy, I've ever it's just get ready. You're coming up on the real good good stuff, man. I almost said the good something else, but then I remembered YouTube's new rules, and I'm like, okay, wait, I got to stop myself. Well, no, the so, so the cussing thing is seconds. in the first 15 seconds. Yeah, we've been live longer than that. You that's true. Say. That's true. But I'd yeah, say, you, yeah, YouTube's you clamping down a lot. little bit more. Yeah, I don't want to run afoul of their of their anti swear. Well, they rules, they but. have a whole bunch of new rules now. Like, I feel sorry for new channels uh, that are starting because yeah. I got an email from YouTube. Fortunately, since we're monetized, we got to just opt into the new rules. But now to get monetized, you have to have uh, a certain number of view hours, which was always true, like uh, 4,000 hours over the course of one year or something. That's not a huge hurdle. But now you also yeah. have to have something like 930,000 shorts views. Oh, like geez. public pu so now you have to also do shorts even if you don't want to do them just that's to get monetized oh, God, that sucks yeah it's it's Ugh. really bad that's I, well yeah as you said that's really tough for new channels yeah i i'm oh, glad God. we're here and yeah. we've we've are but we don't even have like <laughs> we haven't met the criteria for shorts you know i should probably not say that we're live but <laughs> <laughs> youtube if you're watching we're already shorts. monetized you didn't make us do it yeah yeah uh, also, shout outs to our to uh, our various content creator friends and more, many of whom I got to see at MAGFest. I got to see Ant Dude, Fushi, uh, Gilly the Kid, Lewis Ellingworth, who we had on uh, TNT before, uh, Nathaniel Bandy. Uh, we got to talk about, you know, how awesome Bandy's universe is. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, I it was my great honor to play Sans in episode four, do the voice of Sans in episode four of Bandy's universe. So if you haven't checked out that amazing series, Check out the whole thing, including the one I'm in. But definitely check out the whole thing. It's awesome. And uh, all the love to all of our content creator friends out there who I got to see at Mac. It was a lot of fun. Uh, well, you know, it's also fun. Super Chats. We've got quite a few already. Daniel, so... Daniel's got something ready to go. I just see Oh, it I'm sorry. Go, go for it, Daniel. <laughs> what what you got for us? I want to control this channel for a moment. Um, I want to ask <laughs> chat, chat, how many of you guys out there know that we have a Twitch channel? I want you guys to tell me how many of y'all know that we actually have official GVG on Twitch. Me? Do I count? I know. You've I've... been on it, Ash. You don't count. <laughs> I haven't been on it. Jeez. I'm sorry, Steve. We're going to make time for you one day. I, I promise. One I of these. It's always during a time where you're busy for work. Yeah, that's but, true. Um, Brandon and I were, we spent our first GV, uh, GVG cast. We spent our first uh, Goodbyes Arcade on Thursday. We were just chatting. We didn't play anything. We were just talking with each yeah. other. We had like a bit of a cast. And um, we want to really push the Twitch channel a lot more this year. Uh, hopefully, at some point, we can reach partner. But um, every Tuesday and Thursday at about 12.45 uh, p.m. Pacific, uh, 2.45 Central, we're playing games together for, for a couple hours. Uh, sometimes we have guests on. This week, we were playing Super Mario, uh, Mario Party Superstars with uh, Felix from Nintendo Life and Lex from uh, Zelda, Zelda Universe. We were having we have guests every now and then on the channel, so we always have a good time on there. But we definitely want to have more guests on, do more things. Uh, we want to try and do more solo streams. So on Saturday, I'm going to be doing, hopefully, like maybe around the, the same usual time, I'll be going solo with a game that I I kind of jump on whenever Brand is not available. And then on Sundays at some point or whenever he's available, I think he still has to figure that one out. He's going to be doing streams as well with uh, maybe like Monster Hunter or Dragon Quest X, which is like the English translated version with with friends as well. So oh, cool. we're definitely going to be pushing that a lot more. I'm going to be shaming these guys to mention that at the end of their videos as well, because Brandon and I do mention it at the end of our videos, but there's not enough circulation right. of that talk. We kind of forget. I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell at John too much for forgetting to include that in our channel trailer because it's not <laughs> in our channel trailer whatsoever. <laughs> so people forget. We get people in chat all the time saying, I didn't know you guys had a, had a, had a Twitch channel. So uh, we're going to be pushing that more this year. You are absolutely right. We need to push that more and and you know danny already said it but i'll say it as well uh brandon and danny do an amazing job over on good vibes arcade on our twitch channel so please definitely do check that out they are 
doing they're killing it over there and it's a lot of fun <laughs> i have had the honor of joining them for a few streams unfortunately a lot of the time when they stream i'm in the middle of my work day for my day job so it's hard for me to be on there consistently mm -hmm. and of course my day job is starting to ramp up again now after the new year um but i i want to be on more this year i hope i can be but it is right smack in the middle of my work day so it's kind of hard but i'm going to try to make it happen when i can yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's part of the reason why we're doing a bit more more days, especially especially on the weekend, so we can get yeah. more people involved as well. But yeah, that's pretty much my my little shout out for that there. My my my, my shameful plug. No, <laughs> well, not well, not shameful shame. at all. <laughs> Completely um, shame free. What and, what would not be shame free is Cutie Caitlin's amazing idea here in live audience chat. Steve Drunk plays Octo Expansion on GV Arcade, guaranteed partner. <laughs> I don't know if that Ooh. would be shame. Oh dear! There would yeah. be a lot of shame um, to go around. <laughs> in a yeah, stream like be, that. Uh, there'd be a yeah. lot. To, I don't know if our our channel would be the same after that, but it would change forever, <laughs> right? Uh, thank you, Caden M and Chess. Saying anyone tell Danny he's got a great voice. Well, part of that might be because he does. I I, up, I upgraded this microphone very generously to uh, because of Brandon. It's an Audio Technica. I forgot what Steve said it was. It's an AT twenty twenty XLR microphone. It is there nice. There's a legacy with that microphone. We all started at GX with that mic. And in fact, Ash is talking into I that still same model of mic right now. And yeah, I still have it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but no, intense. Daniel has a very soothing voice. You should do like, you should do ASMR, Daniel. You have, you're very soothing. I should probably be a little less chaotic when I'm reading my scripts and maybe go for just a, a, a chill one instead. But I'll, I'll right. be a little more chill during our streams. But um, okay. yeah. yeah. That was just that was my plug. I hear you all in the Discord improvements. I heard you all talking about that recently as well. I just wanted to address that to people that were concerned about us not having that that exposure. I guess is a word for it. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting that out there this year a bit more. So hopefully we're on a road to partner. We'll see what happens. Hell yeah. yes, yes indeed. Also, really quickly, uh, a nice birthday shout out to our good friend and patron Leftox. It was their birthday on, let me see here, January 10th. So happy birthday, Left Ox. I have not seen if you're here with us in uh, at the show today, but if you're if you're not, hopefully you will see this shout out on the VOD later on. Yeah, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Hope you're having happy a great birthday. Week. Yeah, hope you're having a great week. Uh, speaking of birthdays, Disney Duncan with a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. Saying today is my brother's birthday. I got him Kirby in the Forgotten Land and the Steve and Alex Amiibo set. Well, you are a very... Oh, nice. Very good brother. That is a yeah. nice set of gifts. Uh, happy birthday to your brother. Kirby in the Forgotten Land was personally my number three game of the year uh, for 2022. Mm -hmm. I love that game too. Death. And speaking of Amiibo, I'm going to pick up my Sephiroth Amiibo later tonight. Ah, I, I was wait. just talking about that before the show. I forgot to order one. I need oh, to no. I ordered, ah. I ordered both. Kazuo's coming on time. Sephiroth got delayed. And I'm just like, why? Why Sephiroth? Sephiroth, I have two Cloud Amiibo here for you to in, 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 antagonize. Just... Please, please, I, I'm waiting for this this collection to finish. Well, Supernova's still stuck doing, uh, or Sephiroth's still stuck doing Supernova. That's why it's taking a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, he's, he's just stuck in that summon animation. Um, also, Disney Duncan with another super chat for $5. Thank you very much, Duncan. This year marks Ocarina of Time's 25th anniversary and the Wind Waker's 20th anniversary. I can't, I can't <laughs> think about that. Will we get anything related to these games or is it just Tears of the Kingdom? I continue to believe that we're going to get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD on the Switch at yeah. some point. It has to happen. It just it does. I don't know if it'll be this year. It feels like it should be, but I don't know if it makes sense to, you know, how how so, soon can they release it before Tears of the Kingdom? And, yeah, and the, it makes sense. The issue that I have is that it seems like there's been multiple opportunities for Nintendo to drop these ports on the Switch, yeah. and they just haven't. The only thing I can think of, but and I don't think Nintendo's necessarily going to do this, the only way it would make sense to me is if they do those in conjunction with the release of Tears of the Kingdom in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would have to be like they do a direct that's heavily focused on Tears of the Kingdom, and then they go like, oh, by the way, these other Zelda games are available now, like in the eShop, or they're coming out... Mm -hmm. you know, really close to the release of Tears of the Kingdom so that you can play other Zelda games, you know, to try to get a Halo effect off of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. The thing that I have an issue with, though, is the Breath of the... or the Ocarina of Time part of the question. Um, because that opportunity seems like it came and went already. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't yeah. think Nintendo is going to come out with... in the same year that they're releasing a, a mainline AAA Zelda game and say, like, hey, we remade Ocarina of Time! And they've already re-released it on NSO. 
So right. it doesn't make a ton of sense for them to bring it back out in any other form unless it's a full on remake. And I just don't think we're getting that. Like I I don't Same. believe that Nintendo's devoting any level of effort to the Ocarina of Time remake that we all deserve. Yeah. Right. It, it's strange that we didn't get that release last year because I think 2022 is the first year in a long time that there's been no Zelda release, at least for like, I mean, like a traditional Zelda release, because pretty much the only adjacent thing to that is the NSO releases that we have for N64. Right. Right. And speaking of, when are we getting Mario Party 3? That's supposed to drop this month, right? I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm Mario Party 3 <laughs> and Goldeneye. I know that's not supposed to be this month specifically, but just <laughs> where's Goldeneye, man? I can't wait for it. That I'm one's so really ready weird. To play some... Yeah, it really is, right? I don't know how they announced it with just like a someday. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not that hard to port, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it still tickles me, though, that, that somehow the NSO version is going to be online, but the Xbox version is not. That is the weirdest reversal it's hilarious. of roles. I've, it's so weird. It I, I guarantee that mind. Nintendo... Like that had to be like Nintendo had some form of rights to the game that were like yeah. irrefutable, and and that was their bargaining chip. They're like, okay, you can have it, but we get multiplayer. <laughs> like, right. right. Um. That's that's what I have to imagine. It, it is weird though because it's still just an NSO release. I think Nintendo is is incorrectly expecting that this is going to cause a huge uptick in. Subs. I think you're right. I yeah. think that it's going to move the needle slightly. Mm -hmm. And then and then those subs that picked up for Goldeneye are going to drop off immediately once they get bored. Right. Yeah, I think you might be right. Uh, by the way, I, I almost missed this, but we also have another patron birthday. Our good friend and patron, Betty Noms Bunsies, uh, uh, their birthday was yesterday, the 12th. So happy belated birthday, Betty. Hope you're having a great one. And uh, I'm birthday. sorry that your birthday was right before Friday the 13th, but I hope you're not experiencing any, any bad luck or weirdness oh, on gosh. that front. But that uh, yeah, no, happy, happy birthday. Uh, next up is our good friend Jaden Buck with ten dollars. Thank you, Jaden. Crazy question Friday's crazy question number sixty six or number six sixty six because Friday the thirteenth. If the name Good Vibes Gaming was already taken, what would you guys name this channel? Oh man, that's oh, yeah. hilarious because it was <laughs> taken. Well, <laughs> so, not, yeah, it, well, yeah, it like, was. We right? had so if I can if I can get a little bit into our origin story here it was sure. funny because when Ash Derek and I were like just the three of us were talking over what to do and and how to brand the channel Ash came out and he's like I have the name good vibes gaming in my mind and no one's using it and so me being like the <laughs> research person no one that I'd seen. on the team yeah. like I immediately googled it and I was like there's like a hundred channels named this. Well, what I meant was like nobody that nobody that <laughs> right. had trademarked it. Or, right, right. There yeah. was no existing trademark or copyright. Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, but yeah. yeah, like you search Good Vibes Gaming. And before we came around, there was like tons of Instagram pages named that, Facebook right. video channels, a couple YouTube channels. And I was like, do we really want this name? How bad do we want it? <laughs> uh, but it, it, it all worked out in the end. I think we all agreed that that was like the name. It made sense. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely like several other people had, had tried to start channels with the same name. Yeah. Uh, we got lucky in that none of them were actually like active at the time that we started right. this. And I promise everyone, I did Google it and see these inactive channels <laughs> and lack of trademark. Steve's over here making me sound like I don't know how to Google anything. I swear I saw that. I meant nothing trademark, nothing trademark. I, I think Ash was just hanging out and he's like, yeah, that sounds good. He yeah, just had uh -huh. it written in a notebook with like a heart drawn around it. <laughs> Hell, I mean, e even before GVG took its current form, I had a short-lived blog that I called Good Vibes Gaming because, like I said, the vague concept of what I wanted Good Vibes Gaming to be had been bouncing around in my head for quite a while. But I, and, and I initially started it years ago as a blog that didn't go really anywhere, but the, the concept stayed with me. And fortunately, nobody was using it in an official legal capacity, and so we were able to grab it. I had wanted to do a channel called Couch Co-op, and I realized quickly that that could be porn. Mm, yep, mm. yeah, that's very true, that's true. very true. Um, next up, we've got... Oh, wait, we didn't actually answer the question. I don't know. <laughs> did we have any other... <laughs> do you have a, did, uh, did we have any other I'm names waiting. in... I don't even know that we really seriously considered any others, did we? Uh... I don't think we did. Like, we never... I don't think we batted around a name. Like, we batted mm -hmm. around... <laughs> Classy Mudkip got me. Uh, uh -oh. We batted around logos 
and and art stuff before Daniel came around a lot. Like we have we have tons of different logo treatments. <laughs> See, I, I yeah, I saw it. Classy Mudkip like, got whoa. asked just now. Yeah, too. I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah but yeah, I don't think we uh, seriously considered. Yeah, we considered other like uh, concepts and, and other things surrounding the channel, but not the name really. Yep the the name was set very very early on that was pretty much yeah. the first thing that we we decided on like and set in stone and then we just kind of moved forward from there right at, at this right. point it's slowly being more known just as gbg as the the brand identity but it's always going to be good vice gaming of course well yeah yes. I, I mean it's the same thing like ign is still technically imagine games network but no one right. calls them that exactly yeah it's like in 10 so years people will be me. like what is a gvg <laughs> right yeah uh betty g glad to hear no bad luck but not glad to hear other than no drinking for a 21st birthday due to surgery i hope your surgery went or goes oh, well uh but i'm sorry you had to had to have a, a sober 21st birthday if you wanted not to that's uh that's a yeah bummer. but uh, i i you'll promise make up for you it. at some you'll point in your life it. you're not gonna regret that you didn't drink on your 21st yes. birthday because exactly you're, you're gonna have a night that makes you question why you started at all <laughs> yep 100 percent um next up we've got nine dollars and 99 cents from waffle king 1480 thank you waffle king uh when i first read the title i thought it was a spongebob reference yep you can thank derek for that uh what like daniel and i were trying to come up with titles we were coming up blank and uh derek popped in he's not here today by the way it's only because he's sick but he's getting better don't worry he'll be fine but he is feeling under the weather today which mm -hmm. is why he's not with us right now uh but yeah he did pop in and he's pretty good with title names and he was like what about that and i'm like well we're not talking about SpongeBob, but I still love it. So yeah, yeah. we went with that. Yeah. Sandy Cheeks. It's relevant for Kirby. Yeah. Uh, next up is five dollars from our good friend Rec BCQ. Thank you, Rec. Oh, this isn't uh, this is not good vibes though. My parents and I, and I all got COVID, so now I'm stuck in a home. I've been able to draw and game and such, so I guess it's okay. GVG Cast is a pick me up though. Well, Rec, we are so sorry oh, about you and your family getting COVID, and we hope you uh, all have a smooth, speedy recovery. Although I am glad that you've been able to get some some chill, free timing in, some free time in for drawing and gaming. So yeah, that's good, and we hope you feel better very soon. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Next up, we've got. Why does YouTube chat act like this? Ah, it like skipped a bunch of stuff. Okay, here we go. Next up, we've got Rec. Oh, Rec again with two dollars. Thank you, Rec. Play Ring Fit Adventure. Get swole on the swole lead. I don't know if I want to play Ring Fit Adventure while looking at the small screen, though. I think that has to be a TV mode game for me only. Oh, you, yeah, not... I would not play Ring Fit oh, on, no. on the uh, in handheld mode on any model of the Switch. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'd have to play it just on, on TV mode. But yeah, that is one of my goals is to, uh, you know, this year is, is exercise a bit more. Not I don't have a target weight or anything, but I am trying to get on the road to getting back in better shape. So uh, fingers crossed I'm able to make that happen. And uh, one more, <laughs> Rex says, dude, I wasn't serious. Yeah, you know, but it still had to act like you were. So. <laughs> uh, all right, one more for now with one of our matchup super chats. Thank you, Kaiser the Fighter with $2. Uh, Sonic.exe from Sonic versus Hero Brian from Minecraft. And I take issue with this because Sonic.exe is like a creepypasta character. This is not an actual Sonic character, but I don't know anything about Hero Brian, so I'm just gonna go with Sonic.exe. I don't know. I had to look up Sonic.exe <clears throat> and much I wouldn't want to fight him in the first place. So me neither. yeah, He's pretty Sonic damn scary. takes it. That, yeah. That scared me back then. Yeah, I would say Sonic. Same, like, they're same. both basically like creepypasta abominations, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we will get on to some more super chats later in the show, but speaking of scary. Uh, we've got some news to talk about. One of uh, one of the biggest stories of the week has to do with a scary game turned into a probably scary TV series, and that, of course, is the HBO TV series The Last of Us, and it is getting rave reviews. You guys, it is sitting yep. at ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I've been I've been reading a bunch of reviews, a bunch of headlines about it. So many people are saying this is one of, if not the best, video game adaptation ever. And now I have suddenly gone from, oh, you know, cool, Last of Us TV series to I'm looking forward to watching this. I'm really excited about it. What about you guys? Uh, I've I've been excited. You've been, so, yeah, okay. Um, I got to, I mentioned this previously, and it made, I can't remember who, but it made someone in our audience really pissed, and I didn't understand. <laughs> um, oh, <no. laughs> but at PAX, I got to talk to uh, Neil Druckmann about the show, and he was telling me that he basically, like, was living in his office like 
comparing cutscenes from the game oh, wow. to how they were represented in the show. And it just gave me a lot of confidence in like the level of attention and care that was going into it. Um, and, and so I, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I think the last of us is a great story. Even if, you know, if you don't like the gameplay, I still think that you can, you can enjoy the story for what it is. And I think it's a really compelling story that I, I personally think will do well on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited to see just, the up in quality for all these adaptations that we've seen through movies like from sonic to uh, uh netflix adaptations for games like castlevania is probably my favorite at the moment uh favorite adaptation from a game it's really cool to see uh just how how much the quality is going up for these and how like both people that aren't really necessarily in that that space of knowing what the last of us is for example and those who played the games are all kind of in solidarity of like yeah this is a, turning out to be a really good show on on its own yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it based on what I've been hearing. Uh, again, so many positive reviews. And I, I'm guessing, I mean, it, it assuming it gets a season two, which I'm guessing it probably will, I guess they're just going to directly adapt Last of Us Part 2 for season two. Do you think they might divide uh, part two into see like two seasons possibly? Like I know, as far as I understand it, the, the, the current season, season one, is just The Last of Us Part 1. There's no part two content in it as far as I'm aware. I, th I think it's going to come down to a dollars and cents kind of decision. You know, if, sure. if season one does well, then I can't imagine Naughty Dog and Sony being like, no way, we won't take yeah. more HBO money. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think that if, if it didn't, it would be kind of silly because I think all the backlash around The Last of Us Part Two was was from bad actors who sure. didn't didn't like specific plot points of the game. You know, and I don't think that the TV audience is going to react the same way to that stuff. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, by the way, thank you for the clarification, that alpha line. Hero Brian is all is a Minecraft creepypasta as well. So they were both creepypasta characters. I was not yeah. aware of that. So thank you for that alpha line. Uh, but yeah, so The Last of Us, uh, really looking forward to it. It starts this Sunday, the 15th. I think all the episodes are dropping at once, if I, if I understand that correctly. So... It is something that uh, you know we shouldn't have to wait too long to watch each episode, hopefully, and uh, and yeah, so look for, look forward to that starting Sunday. Uh, now let's switch gears to something that I know you would like to talk a little bit about, Daniel. I, we've mentioned this earlier before the show, <laughs> but Bandai Namco reveal uh, or not revealed mentioned this week they are open to more Tales of remasters, and they are actually awaiting fan requests and as the biggest tales of fan i know and because i know bandai namco are watching every week what is your what's your big what are your biggest requests daniel for for more tales remasters oh as far as remasters go um the one i'm wondering what happened with this one is tales of the abyss uh mm -hmm. this one has has a port on the 3ds but it's never received any kind of like enhanced uh edition like tales of symphonia has the ps2 version which is the one that we're getting remastered uh, next month, Tales of Vesperia in the in the in that same kind of generation got its proper remaster on the PS3. We got that with Definitive Edition uh, a few years back now. But Tales of the Abyss never had any kind of expansion towards it. I guess it's perfect the way it is. But you can also just remaster that, remake it in some way or form. Uh, this has one of my favorite stories, some of my favorite characters. That one really deserves to have a bit more done to it, a bit more of a polish. It has a lot of room for that. It's still a really great game even today. Um, the Tales of, of Tales of Destiny director's cut, that mm -hmm. version, we it still hasn't been properly translated. We haven't seen that version here at all. We want to, I want to play that one very much. Uh, games like that in Tales of Rebirth, I would be so cool to see that in like an HD 2D style because the sprite art is really lovely and some of the, the effects you see during battle are some of the best I've seen in the Tales series, honestly. Um, I guess the last one would be Tales of Legendia. Um, that one unfortunately suffered uh, being developed by a completely different team altogether. It plays much like the very old ones, like uh, Tales of Fantasia, Tales of Eternia, Destiny, which are fine games, but it's it's like once you went to Symphonia and then you go back again for, for Legendia, uh, it kind of was deflating, which is unfortunate because it's such a cool game and it's on its own. There's a mm -hmm. cool... Uh, it, Pretty much every JRPG you can think of, when you think of the world map and you get like your the way of traversal where you can fly across it, you, you spend like a whole minute, you can go through the entire world map. 
Uh, you don't have anything like that in Legendia, but the entire world map is contextualized on top of a ship, a massive ship. Oh, so when, cool. you go to, when you go to the world map, it's it's boat shaped, and uh, it, it's it kind of reminds me of Xenoblade, where you can kind of contextualize where on this location. Oh, I are. love that. Yeah, that's on, cool. On a Titan. So beyond beyond the ship, there's like actual countries and places that you never go to, but they're still relevant to the plot. I thought it was a really cool way to do a world map that you don't see. It was, it was a lot more realistic, I guess, in that sense. But so many different cool ideas from that game that can be brought over. Um, and the soundtrack, that is cool. the soundtrack is perfect as it is. Like you wouldn't even have to touch that. Goshina does an immaculate job on the Legendia soundtrack. But oh, so that's one of the few that uh, Sakuraba doesn't or didn't do. Yeah, Motoi Sakuraba is known for doing mostly all the Tales series games, but mm -hmm. I think Goshina did such an impressive job with Legendia. They brought him back to do some bits and pieces here and there. They did uh, a few of the dungeons in like Zestiria, and they, they completely stand apart from <laughs> Motoi Sakuraba style, which has truly become kind of its own genre. Uh, it's become a bit stale for me, honestly, but there's sure. some standouts. I, I think he's he needs a break from Tales, honestly, but... He's done some yeah. really cool soundtracks, like Golden Sun. He's worked with Camelot oh, as well. Yeah. Uh, very cool, though. But yeah. I feel like I often hear good things about Tales of Shilia or Zilia or however you're supposed to say it. That one, too. Is that one, is that too recent for a remaster, or do, do you think that would benefit? Those, unfortunately, have been stuck on the PS3, and they mm -hmm. have not been anywhere oh, else. Oh, yeah. Anywhere else. Oh, Those wow. also are very much one and two. Um, and even yeah, Tales I've heard of... really good things about them. Yeah, those two Tales games, they're, I, I really like those, and I hope that that's also one that can come on a different console, even if they just port it at this point. But any remasters, I, I hope Namco... I hope Bamco does a more mindful job than they're doing with Symphonia. It's it's a bit it's a bit disappointing to see. It is. How, how I love Symphonia. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that game, and it is really disappointing. And I know, you, I mean, you did a whole video on it, but... It is really disappointing to see that they're not really treating it with the the care and, and love that that game deserves. I've seen screenshots of uh, what it looks like on a pachinko machine because there's a of course there's a Symphonia pachinko. Of course there is. Yeah. And I, I've only seen screenshots, but they're like properly rendered. In the <clears throat> like you would see uh, more recent Tales games, like action, like not the chibi models, but actually fully rendered. And I'm like, that's what I want, but we're not going to get it because it's stuck in a pachinko machine. <laughs> Right, it's well, such a shame. It's it's like not. the uh, Metal Gear Pachinko machines that had like the mm -hmm. massively updated uh, Snake Eater visuals that we have not seen in an actual game. Yeah, <clears throat> they always do that. They always yeah. get me with that. Yeah. Well, I, I I hope they do Abyss as well because I, I did play the 3DS version. And I, I mentioned this to you before, but I did play the 3DS version. I kind of just for whatever reason didn't get past like maybe ten to fifteen hours and. I couldn't stand the main character, but I also know that he goes through an amazing transformation and that I need to experience that. So for whatever reason, I didn't stick with it. And I'd like to have another chance to do so on the big screen in, in like a remastered form. So because yeah. I was enjoying it otherwise. I yeah, know, all the time with, with I know. Luke. But yeah, when I he looks one of my favorite characters. You wouldn't believe that from playing like the first five or so hours, but. That cast is really like it's just a, it's a small cast, it's only like six characters, but right, comes like some of my favorite characters in the series. Well, hey, and no, I totally get it. I mean, I as a perennial Tetis defender, I know what that's like. I know what it's like <laughs> to be to be a fan of a character that so many people misunderstand and, and hate for what I uh, he's, think are, he's my are Tetis. misguided he, reasons. Yeah, there you Tetis. go. So I completely, I completely get it. And yes, I said Tetis, not Titus, because that's what it is. It's Tetis. Damn it. Uh, all right. Well, this is obviously a, a fairly slow news week. January is often a slow news month for gaming. So I don't think that Kirby uh, having a new ability in a re-release would necessarily normally qualify as a as a story that we would talk about. But it's January. It's a bit of a slow news week. So let's talk about sand. Uh, we are getting some new content in Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which is also coming out next month alongside Tales of Symphonia Remastered. And yeah, he's got a brand new ability, sand, which... So far, from what we've seen, kind of reminds me of the Sand Rod from uh, A Link Between Worlds. I'm sad that uh, poor one out for Ant Dude. His list is already. I know um, it's already uh, outdated. He's in, yeah, he's in shambles right now. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it looks fun. I never actually played this on the Wii. I'm excited to play this one. Oh, and, and dude, right you're now. in for a you're in for a treat. Return to Dreamland is a great so, game. Is Sand like a net new ability or new to this game? Because I feel no, like completely new. They new. announced Festival too, and that's an old. That's a returning yeah. Festival is right? returning from Star Allies. That's and that's okay. a returning one. But Sand is a brand new ability to Kirby. 
Gotcha. It, Which is surprising. It reminds me of Sandshrew, yeah. and that's good enough for me. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I am continuing to really like the thick outlines on the characters in Dream and Deluxe. Like oh, it's, it's yeah. a definite art style shift from the original Wii version. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm really continuing to like the way this looks, and uh, I'm I'm it's right for a replay for me. I'm looking forward to it personally. Uh, well, although it does come out right next to theater rhythms, so <laughs> the the thick outlines give it kind of like a cell shaded vibe, and, yeah. and I I cell shade everything in my opinion. Like I love yeah, that totally. art style; I can't get enough of it. Um, I think it's wildly underutilized. So and it fits Kirby because Kirby's kind of a simplistic design. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So no, man, Daniel, you are in for uh, for a treat, and I know uh, I think uh, I think he's watching right now. Our good friend and patron. Super dank, awesome unicorn guy. Uh, that is, I might be his favorite game of all time, but definitely his favorite Kirby game of all time. And so he will be able to tell you a lot about how awesome that game is. So you're 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 gonna have a great time, man. I, I just I, wish there was online so you and Brandon could play together. We could all play together. There's online for one mini game. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that is such a Nintendo move. That um, is, yeah. But but yeah, I, I keep getting told I got to play this Kirby game. Last year it was everyone telling me you got to play Planet Robobot, which I did. I played that before the Forgotten Land came out. So now I'm being told you got to play this ver this this Kirby game. I love Kirby. I'm not like ignoring his titles, but I just kind of missed. Apparently, I missed the best ones in the series. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely get on that once that comes out. I'm excited. It looks it looks lovely. A, a sand looks like a, a fun ability. They're, they're so creative with those Kirby hats. And there's like, yeah, it's over 60 now. It's insane. Yeah, no, it's seriously. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get to do a discussion sometime with Ant Dude about, you know, our ranking our all, all the Kirby, all of Kirby's abilities that will be more updated than uh, his own list now because <laughs> of sand being included. So. Yeah, um, one, Delgado, to answer your question in, li in live audience chat, asking, are we not going to talk about the sinking ship that is Ubisoft? And I, I thought about that when gathering news for today's episode, and I just, you know, Ubisoft is su such bad vibes in general. We don't really talk about them or Activision very much on the show anyway, just because we don't want to bring people down. Very rarely is there anything positive to say about them. Uh, but we all, you know, so it, yeah, I mean, it's true. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope ma apparently massively underperformed their expectations. They delayed Skull and Bones. I think Just Dance 2023 also under underperformed for them. So they're not doing well. They're in, they're in trouble. And of course, uh, how, do, how do you, Eves Guillermo, how, how the hell do you say his name, basically laid the blame at the feet of employees because that's what executives do. Screw them. Um, but yeah, it just felt kind of like bad vibes. But yeah, obviously we know about the news. They seem to be a sinking ship. We'll see how it goes. I don't, you know, it is it is surprising though that Mario and Rabbids underperformed, right? Uh, no. You don't think so? I, I don't think I don't think the Sparks of Hope really performed up to expectations either. I think that. Oh, you mean Kingdom Battle? Or Kingdom Battle? Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Kingdom Battle didn't perform up <clears> to <throat> expectations either. If you remember, uh, this is very much following the same trajectory that the original game followed, and that's that came out full price within thirty days was half price, right? And then was in bargain bins probably six months on. And I, I think that it's just... Uh, and, and I'm a huge Mario fan. And I, I think the games themselves are entertaining. But I also mm -hmm. don't put them in the same league as like a proper Mario game. And I think that's what's missing here is that the legions of Mario fans that have certain expectations for the character and for the franchise aren't finding what they enjoy in these kind of, you know, tactical games. It, it's just... It's a very different experience from your traditional Mario game, just with your Mario characters put in. And I think that Ubisoft probably had the distinct misunderstanding that just putting Mario in something automatically makes it sell. And that's just not true. There's been plenty of Mario-related flops over the years. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it's... I mean, it's one of those games that also came out during a time where... I, I don't know. Like, I don't remember there being a whole lot of hype for this game. I think within hardcore gaming circles there were small subsets of people that were very excited for a sequel to this but i don't think that it ever had that broad like mass market appeal that they probably were hoping it would have right. um <coughs> ubisoft is kind of I, I think the issue with ubisoft is more that they just make the same game over and over and over right. again uh everything is like a big open world game with really shitty comedy tacked onto it now right like far cry the latest far cry is like a parody of far cry they're like look there's a chihuahua named nacho <laughs> in a wheelchair and he fights i'm like uh-huh 
come on, man. Like, <clears> even, <throat> even for you guys, this is pretty low. <laughs> like, are no, you... I got, I got a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's it's gotten to the point where, like, I play their new games and I'm just... <laughs> I, I can't. Right. Uh, I got to say, just doing some quick searching while we were chatting just now. I, I mean, Kingdom Battle, it, it has sold at least 2 million copies. So, I, I mean, it didn't do terribly. I, it seems to well, be yeah, but that, you're that it talking had a about... much better trajectory than sparks of hope at least yeah but you're talking about a company that's tried to fart out like a a triple a game every year right and and so i'm sure that their expenses are just ridiculous like insanely Mm -hmm. massive and their last several games have been very bad like they pinned they pinned their hopes on what was it writer's republic and that game was just terrible like it was one of the worst games i've played in a long time Mm -hmm. um you know, they're, they've got several Assassin's Creed's in the oven right now. I, I don't even know how you develop three of those games at once. Right. <laughs> the amount of people that must take is is mind-numbing. Uh, Prince of Persia has been announced and delayed, and delayed and delayed and yeah. delayed. Uh, Skull and Bones <laughs> is, is nowhere to yeah. be seen. I think just a lot of their games, way more than they expected, are in development hell. And they can't dig their way out of it now. Right. But hey, Beyond Good and Evil 2, that's coming soon, right? Right? Yeah, soon. Totally, totally coming soon. Um, QD Caitlin posted an image saying that Kingdom Battle had amassed 10 million players, which that that's a huge 8 million difference in, in between sales and players. So not quite sure. I mean, Wikipedia might just be wrong in, with the sales, but that's quite a huge differential there. So well, I'm not how, quite if, sure. If you <clears throat> actually sold 8 million copies, then I have no clue how the hell they're... Oh, that's that's the <laughs> yeah. first game, Kingdom Battle. They, they, yeah, that's the first game, oh. yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, not going to help them this year, for sure. <laughs> no. And I, I will say that for me, at least personally, uh, Sparks of Hope, I was interested in it, but it just came out at a bad time for me. There was just too much else coming out that I that I cared about more. Um, you know, it's something I'd still like to go back and check out at some point, but it just it wasn't that high a priority for me. And I feel like the marketing wasn't really there for it either. Yeah, it was rough, especially around the time when you have like Pokemon coming out, like around that time. Sonic was coming out. Uh, there was just other titles that people kind of gravitated towards instead. And I, I played this game myself. Um, I got very close to the end, and then other things, other the aforementioned titles came out. I, mm-hmm. I, I like to play the, I, I dabble with a lot of different strategy games like this, and uh, I liked it better than Kingdom Battle personally mm-hmm. for the kind of free roaming and more flexible. Uh, um, maps that you can you can approach battles with mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah i i, I can see how it just didn't really perform as well i'm I'm looking forward to the dlc rayman's coming at some point right I'm right we're jumping into that but yep. as far as as far as that uh everything else goes it kind of just fell off the conversation very quickly yeah for sure well juan there you go you got your you got your little ubisoft conversation there excuse me <laughs> <clears throat> So one more thing I'd like to talk about before we move on to our patron topics and some more Super Chats is something that I I think I'm going to need to drop some money on this. So as we can all agree with no argument whatsoever, the GameCube controller is the greatest controller oh. of all time. And see, no argument, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I know where you're going. And <laughs> uh-huh. I, yeah, yeah. Should I not be excited? Okay, so I've never heard of this peripheral brand. It's, it's <laughs> NYXI, Nixie. I've never heard of them. Uh, but they they revealed something called the Nixie Wizard, which is a GameCube inspired controller that also functions as a set of Joy Con. And I've seen pictures of this thing as you know as the Joy Con oh, on the this... Switch in handheld mode. And I want to play Smash this... in handheld mode with this with this, this thing. thing. I don't know. Gives me life. Uh, the yeah. the big the big thing you're missing though is that okay. this uh, Nixie Wizard is what it's called. Yeah, uh, the Nixie and Wizard. and I have been throwing my credit card at the monitor for like three days since they announced it. It's been sold out. I can't get one. It's been sold um, out already? Damn it. Okay. It's been sold out since the day they announced it, but the big the big thing is that it uses Hall Effect yes. analog sticks, so no drift. No drifting. Yeah. It no is impossible, and if you want to know, if you want to know if this is legit or BS, go pick up a Sega Dreamcast controller from 20 years ago and try to use it. I promise you it mm-hmm. will not have drift. And because Sega somehow <laughs> solved this issue decades ago with the uh, Saturn and the Dreamcast analog sticks, they like went all out and got the good sticks. And I guess every other company was like, well, we can get these cheap ones. <laughs> and so they've right. been doing that. Uh, shame on you, Nintendo, by the way, um, and Sony and Microsoft, <clears throat> all of you. You should go to your rooms and think about what you've done to all of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like 70 bucks. So it's it's cheaper than, than regular Joy-Con. It has the GameCube layout, which in my mind is objectively superior. 
and, and it like it it has driftless joysticks. Like I don't know of a negative for this thing yet, and I've just yeah. been staring at the screen. Oh, and it has a special grip that makes it exactly the dimensions of a goddamn oh, wave bird. Like I, I need this. So <laughs> I need this in my life. <clears throat> so See, I was bad. That you were gonna say like, oh, you know, dude, Nixie, they suck. Don't don't get excited for this. I, I, I that's what I, I'm afraid you were going in that direction. So I'm no, really no. Glad to hear you're as hyped for this as I am. And I well, hopefully it gets back in stock at some point because I want one of these. And I see some of you disagreeing with the statement of fact that the GameCube controller is the best controller of all time. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. That's just, that's the way it is. <laughs> it is the best, I don't know what to tell you. But no, I, I am genuinely excited for this thing. It is sexy as hell. And that's why I threw it up on our thumbnail today because I want one of these so much and i just i just want to experience playing smash in handheld mode with this thing in oh it's joy con configuration i'm embarrassed by how much yeah, i want this thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i will squeal <clears throat> out of joy when whenever i'm able to buy this thing like i've i've never been more happy at the prospect of losing 70 bucks <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i i hear you um yeah. Juan, thank you for your concern uh i am it's i'm not quite coughing it's my my voice is just I've got some raspy stuff going on. I think I caught a little something at MAGFest. Not COVID. I have tested. I'm COVID negative. But I think I caught a little. I've got a bit of a sore throat, and it's affecting my my chest and my voice. So that's all it is. I'm fine. But thank you for your for your concern. Uh, Daniel, any any thoughts on this, man? Um, I need it. And when? Yeah. When? <laughs> yeah. The, that... uh, the dimensions that you see here, there's, there, there's such like smart little upgrades. Like the C-Stick was always just kind of nub, but they've mm -hmm. made it equivalent to the, the the actual control stick the infamous tiny d-pad which i don't know why people even call this a problem because it's never used for like anything anyways unless you're trying to to play like game boy player games with the gamecube and why would you even do that with the d-pad at that point um mm -hmm. but yeah there's so many little like improvements that you see on this that you know things that i would change to the gamecube myself and there's that's very very minimal things about it uh it just looks so so cool there's, <laughs> there's so many like buttons on it it's and, so uh, nice just the fact that you can I, I guess the only criticism is like i won't be able to i don't know if i'll be able to put my fixture to this but i guess i'm just gonna be holding it hand holding it now anyways um, right oh yeah I, but, but but this is this is ideal for you ash for the for the someone who's gone to the oled side i know i'm the only, I'm the only holdout now i don't think i don't yeah. think I have my day one switch still, and I haven't upgraded since then. But if there's a if there's a new version coming out for like Tears of the Kingdom, or for example, I uh, probably have to finally cave in. Yeah. No, I I still have my launch switch as well, and that's that's what I was rocking up until I got the uh, the Swoled. But I'm I'm giving my launch switch to my wife, who just wants it to have to play in handheld mode to kind of get back into some of the gaming she's missed recently. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited for her to to get back into that and. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just passing that on to her and she doesn't really care about like the all the new bells and whistles and like the better screen and stuff. So it's perfect to just give her that. But uh, yeah, I want this thing and I really hope they make enough that we can all get one because damn, <clears throat> it is sexy. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I also like the fact that you can replace the sticks like they're modular. So you can just take them out and pop on a new one like if you wear That's it so out cool. for some reason. The, the design's really smart. I will say, just so that it's not an echo chamber of endless positivity, I do wonder, like, I see the raised up lip around the A button, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I wonder if that's going to feel weird specifically because I'm so used to the GameCube controller, and I don't quite remember it being pronounced like that on the right, OG Right, that's true. Flat. This that's yeah. GameCube. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Do you guys still have any of your, like, old wave birds? Oh, hell yeah. I've got, Me I've too, got yeah. three of them. It amazes me that that controller still works as well as it does all these years later. All, all my Waybirds still work so well. Sometimes there are some signal issues, but like not that often. And it is so amazing to me that it, it's held up as well as it has. And I still remember the day I got my first Waybird and how like I tested how far away from the TV I could get. It was truly, it felt mind blowing at the time. Like the first ever really consumer, I would say, consumer level friendly wireless controller. And man, it just felt so mind-blowing at the time oh yeah absolutely I, had one. I don't know where that one went uh, but i own one at a time i don't know if a friend took it or something because i would i would always be that person taking all the controllers on consoles to play games with others but yeah i i miss that controller it was it was so cool you just play it across the house that was mind-blowing for me at the time yeah right 
Yeah, I remember when I went in our backyard because there was a window through which you could see from the backyard to the family room and the TV. And I just went into the backyard and ca- I, I was playing Super <laughs> Monkey Ball is what it was. And I, I was just testing how far away I could get it. That thing has some distance to it. It's oh, yeah, it's pr- pretty wild. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, what's also awesome is Super Chats, not, not, not even maybe even more awesome than the GameCube controller because you all are so incredibly kind and generous. Uh, so let's see here. We've got um, Rec BCQ again with five more dollars. Thank you, Rec. I love Splatoon 3 story mode so much. I 100 percented it in two days. Also, I'm just saying I'd watch an, uh, a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 discussion part two for those who missed part one. Well, totally agree with you on Splatoon 3. And yeah, once once uh, Derek and now I guess Steve finish it, I would love to do another discussion about it because I can't talk about Xenoblade 3 enough. I love that game so much. You all know it was my game of the year last year. Um, and I would love to discuss it more and have a chance to properly talk about the spoilers and the ending and, and everything. So hopefully we can make it happen. I really would like to. Uh, next up is Warcry with $10. Thank you very much, Warcry. Finally caught the show live. Love the content, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. It's always really yeah. lovely to hear those words thank of you. encouragement. So thank you very much. Really glad you love what we're doing. Uh, Wreck is back yet again with $5. Thank you, Wreck. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is trying to push a new uh, OGL o- that will be open game license, <clears throat> open game license that will be devastating for so many D and D creators. It would be cool if you all could help speak out to stop it. So, my apologies, I don't really follow D and D that side of things very much. So I, I've been reading about it, but I'm not quite as well. I, I can educated catch about it. But yeah, Steve, sounds like you are though. So go ahead, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. So this was a particularly terrible move on. Wizard of the Coast part. So basically what happened, and and this is for me reading during the show, so I apologize if I have some stuff wrong. Um, but apparently a update to Wizard's open game license was leaked online. And it seems like that was a smart decision by whoever leaked it because it included some truly heinous crap, uh, like requiring creators uh, to pay royalties back to Wizards of the Coast if they like stream <clears throat> D&D. Like, if they play Dungeons and Dragons on a stream of theirs, they have to so pay Wizards of the Coast gross. for the privilege. Like, it, it's kind of that same thing that came up. You remember that Stadia asshole who went yes. on Twitter and was like, you guys should pay us to stream games. Like, you're we're doing you a favor by giving you a code and letting you stream. And uh, obviously, the whole internet, you know, flipped out on that guy. Uh, and he quickly got fired. And, and that's basically what's happening here is someone somewhere at Wizards of the Coast decided we should make people who play our games, which uh, the two biggest ones are obviously Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering. Uh, these guys control both of those. Uh, and they have huge, huge, huge followings online. And obviously there are tons of content creators whose entire channels are built around those games. Uh, you know, so Wizard was trying to basically reach in their pocket. Um Fortunately, however, the latest update as of eight hours ago, so I guess like this afternoon or early this, you know, later this morning, was that uh, Wizards of the Coast has backtracked on all of this. So they they basically, they Hmm. they put out a statement that says, uh, when we initially conceived of revising the open game license, it was with three major goals in mind. First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products, which... You could just moderate that. Um, second, we want to address those attempting to use D&D in Web3 blockchain games and NFTs by making clear that OGL content is limited to tabletop role-playing content like campaigns, modules, and supplements, which agreed, you should do that. But again, that's why you have like teams of lawyers. And third, we want to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players in the community, not major corporations to use for their own commercial and promotional purpose. And then they go on with just a bunch of other crap. So um, mm-hmm. I think that this is really good PR. Like, it's really nice flowery language to use. But obviously, right. like, I don't buy the whole we're going to charge royalties as like a defense against NFTs. Like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, right. That sounds to me more like if people made NFTs, you wanted a piece of the action without publicly being in support of NFTs. Um, so, you know, shame on Wizard for even coming up with the idea, but good on the fans for like absolutely quickly yeah. and loudly letting them know that this is not going to fly. Uh, so it seems like y'all saved <laughs> saved Wizard from themselves this time. Uh 
but yeah, it, it seems like so, you know, it, I don't want to say false alarm, but at least crisis <clears> averted, <throat> I guess, is the right thing to say here. This definitely gives me strong uh, Fine Brothers tr trying to trademark the word react vibes, like that yes. kind of bullshit, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, sorry, bull shoot. Sorry, you too. Um, but yeah, it <laughs> totally reminds me of that. Um, and and also, thank you everyone for being vocal about us wanting to talk about this because one of the reasons I, I like didn't include it initially in our lineup of news this week is because I wasn't sure if that was too far from core like video gaming that you guys would want us to talk about it. So good to know that you do, and we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind in the future. So thank you for being vocal about that and. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope, you know, I, I'm glad they backtracked, but of course they only did so because they got called out. They wouldn't have if they hadn't. So good on, right. as you said, Steve, on the fans for for being so vocal and, and active about this. All right, let's see here. YouTube shot has completely... Do you want me to grab uh, the next one? Okay. No, I got it. Just got here. Uh, next is Humble Jojo with $4.99. Thank you very much, Jojo. Can't believe Mag is in my area, and I didn't realize. Next year, your first drink is on me, Ash. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, Jojo. I, I would love to meet you. I did get to meet uh, some of our lovely fans and patrons at Mag this year, and so I'd love to be able to meet you there next year. And I generally intend to go every year, so I should be looking forward to seeing you next year at Mag. So thank you very much. Uh, next up, Born 96 with four, uh, four pounds and 49 pence. Thank you, Born. So I've started Yakuza Like a Dragon for the first time, and I'm loving the RPG fighting style. Looking forward to the next Like a Dragon in 2023, please. You won't get any argument from us. I know, it's, I think all, all of us love Yakuza Like a yeah. Dragon here. It's going to be interesting, though, because now they've just changed the series name to Like a Dragon <clears throat> to match the right. Japanese name. So I don't know how they're going to delineate which ones are RPGs and which ones are, are core right. action games. Because uh, it seemed like, the good, you know, Yakuza is, is your traditional, what you would think of when you hear Yakuza and like a dragon would be, you know, RPG. So yeah. I don't know how they're going to, I'm just going to guess that Ichiban's going to star like in, in most of those RPG themed. Well, games. I think they've already confirmed that Yakuza 8 or like a dragon 8 is another uh, Ichiban starring game. Oh, right. Okay. I think they've already I, I confirmed that. Yeah. I still need to finish that game. I love it right. to death. And every it's time I play game. it, I get a little further, but I, yeah, RPGs and, and I don't get along very well. It, it's a bit grindy, unfortunately. Like I do love that game to death, but it, it is a bit grindy. And there, and I unfortunately got to a point where I hit a point in the story where you have to have a bunch of money and I've already done all the side quests where you get a bunch of money from, and I'm, I have no interest in doing that business mini game, and I'm like too lazy to look up a guide on how to just cheese it. I'll do it someday, but I just haven't yet. Um, but Born, to speak to your point, I don't. I, you're probably just talking about the RPG one, so like like Yakuza Eight. But the next Like a Dragon game is technically coming out next month, and it's Like a Dragon Ishi, mm -hmm. and it's like a it's like a feudal Japan take on uh, on Like a Dragon. The Yakuza series is more action based gameplay, so. Not one of the RPG ones, but if you like Yakuza in general, definitely check out Like a Dragon Ishii. All right, next up is five Canadian dollars from Chaos Gamer. Thank you. I uh, wanted to say I watch every video, just don't see you guys live, because I like to watch you guys while I build Lego. Thank you for the awesome Aww. content. Well, thank you very much for the kind words, Chaos Gamer, and uh, hope, you're, hope you're enjoying some Lego building right now, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, you. Yeah. All right, one more Super Chat for now, then we'll move on to our patron topics for the week. Uh, uh, five Canadian dollars from our good friend Bongo Lover. Thank you, Bongo Lover. I've had a stressful school week, so I'm glad I could chill it, drink some Danimals, and watch <laughs> y'all. Also, after 700 hours, I finally beat Xenoblade Xenobl Chronicles 3. What a game. <laughs> I mean... 700? That I don't quite get. I mean, maybe you did absolutely every single thing. I did every side quest and basically all the content you can do, and I put in about 160, 150 hours over the course of like four and a half months. But I don't know how you get, unless you're being facetious, I don't know how you get to 700 you mean hours. 70 or? 70 I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 70 I can see. Seven, yeah, and you know, that's actually true. Uh, Dad Alpha Lion says two or three playthroughs maybe. Yeah, maybe you played it multiple times, but. Maybe, yeah. It is, it is crazy though. It is one of those games, and this is one of the reasons it was my game of the year. I have put in, put in, like I said, 160 hours, and I cannot wait for the next drop of DLC to go right back into that game. I cannot get enough. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, but you know what I also can't wait for? Patron topics. So as a reminder, uh, our, our we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gvgaming, and all of our patrons at the producer tier and above get to suggest topics for us to discuss on GVGcast every week 
just like the ones we are about to discuss right now. And Steve, why don't you start us off this this week, man? Sure. Uh, my topic this week comes from Joseph Rutkin, who writes, Hey, GVG, I've got a simple question for you guys. When Sakurai ended that video musing that someone ought to port Kid Icarus, I may have yelled obscenities <laughs> at the screen, so I'm wondering, do you think it's actually happening? Love what you guys do, and I hope none of you overdose on hopium from this question. Uh, Too late. Yeah, I... That's tough. That's that's tough because there's a million different things that could be true about about that. Um, Sakurai could very much be hoping that he can he can do this, and Nintendo may not have interest. Uh, he could also, I, I mean, to just to kind of put my devil's advocate hat on, he could have done this to try to strong arm Nintendo into doing it too. <laughs> like he yeah. may have approached them and said, "Hey, I really want this." And Nintendo said, nah, we, we don't want to pay for that right now. We're not going to fund that. So, no, we're not doing it. And he could have then said, okay, well, I'm going to mention it on my YouTube channel and let's see how they feel about that. Uh, because then, of course, he creates the public perception that, yes, Nintendo's working on it. Because that's what I think a lot of rational people would think. Like, oh, he said this, like, in a wink, nod, wink nudge kind of way. So, of course, you know, he would be the person in a position to know whether or not this is happening and he could very well be hinting at it. Um, and so I think that that puts Nintendo in a weird position if they'd already told him no before. <laughs> because now now he's like, look, hundreds of thousands of people know about it. Millions of people know about it, most likely. And now we have to do it. So I I think that I'm, I'm going to go out on a, on a limb and say, no, I don't think it's coming. And the reason why is, one, Nintendo loves to disappoint. Nintendo. Uh, if you think Nintendo's going to do something, they probably aren't going to do it. Uh, Wind Waker HD. Twilight yeah, Princess Wind Waker HD, yeah. Twilight Princess HD, Ocarina of Time remake, any celebration for Zelda 35. Uh, so I do think, I think that Nintendo very oddly like drops the ball in key ways. The other thing though, and the bigger reason I think, is that Nintendo's internal priorities at this point have likely shifted to their next console. Right. I, uh, you know, we saw reporting last week that Tears of the Kingdom is the last in like last major internally developed game for the Switch. And if that's true, then I don't think they're going to be like, yeah, let's port Kid Icarus to the Switch that we're actively internally trying to move away from at this point. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe, but the Switch is six years old. Uh, wild. And it used yeah. to be. Up until the PS4, it used to be that the console life cycle was considered to be five years. Like a generation right. used to be widely <clears throat> considered to be five years long. Uh, so I think that Nintendo, I, I still think Nintendo's strategy was always, we're going to release the Switch as soon as we can because the Wii U is floundering. And we're going to, this thing's going to live a shortened life by design. And then we're going to release the next thing after that to get back in, in lockstep with generational releases of hardware and i think that the okay. switch did so well that nintendo was like oh crap we don't like we have more time than we thought so we're just gonna ride this wave uh and and then eventually like uh moon road is saying in our chat COVID came and, and then screwed all their plans <laughs> yeah and so now they're they're kind of like okay we we need to get the next console ready we can't do a mid-gen refresh like we're we're i i think there's a lot of chaos internally at nintendo right now that they're not publicly discussing for obvious reasons yeah what, what about you daniel any thoughts on this if there's something i learned about sakurai saying words it's that people will gravitate towards whatever they can to yes to to, to manifest whatever they, it is they want to happen but he knows he has this power when he, he didn't need to bring this up at all but he knows he has like a certain pull when it comes to uh making discussion happen and uh the thing is we don't know if he's working with bandai namco's supposed game on this because i mean he's worked with them for the last several years for smash brothers and it's a team that obviously he trusts with his uh with his ideas and such so we don't know if that's anything related whatsoever or there's smoke there's fire but we don't we don't know at this time um but it i want to see one obviously i want to see one uh oh, rising deserves it so much um just just the fact that i want to play it in a way that doesn't make my hand hurt yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it would be really nice but um, as far Wait, as are you, actually making this happen, are you left-handed too? No, I'm oh, okay. Maybe I, I thought I thought you righties had a good time with this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. It, I mean, I have that little cradle. I, I'm amazed that Sakurai had it so that you they 
included that little cradle to hold it so that it would reduce right. some of the strain, but it still it still hurts you after a while. You have to take a constant break for this game, but it's totally doable in a in a one screen console context. I believe they can accomplish that so well. I think um, so too. Whether it can happen, or whether it's going to happen, I I'm going to say hopefully. <laughs> I, <laughs> one way or another. Uh-huh. I, I have to say that cradle was like the biggest flex ever. Like uh-huh. <laughs> I imagine Sakurai was just drinking with some friends and they're like, did you pass that design by Nintendo? He's like, I told him to make a cradle for that shit, baby. And he like took a shot. <laughs> He's like, cost that company like $40 million in plastic. <laughs> it still kills me that it didn't officially support the Circle Pad Pro because that, that game was built with was, the Circle yeah. Pad Pro in mind and it didn't really use it in any meaningful way. But I mean, yeah, I think we can all, all agree on hopefully. I mean, my mind keeps drifting back to that rumor that we that we heard several months back that Bond and Namco are working on a remaster of a of a first party game. And oh, that would be great. We I want it to be Kid Icarus Uprising more than anything, really. And mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I I definitely hear everything you're saying, Steve. I mean, it, it, there are many reasons to think that it might just not happen, especially as Nintendo are probably starting to focus more on the Switch's successor. On the other hand, we don't necessarily know how far out that successor successor yet is. And we do still have some other high-profile launches on the horizon, like Metroid Prime 4, maybe the Metroid Prime HD remaster, if that ever comes out, Pikmin 4. See, though, Pikmin 4. So uh, I would be willing know. to bet that a Switch successor, I mean, you'd be, I, I think it's beyond like typical Nintendo levels of like, shit you can't understand uh for them (laughs) not to support the switch like backwards compatible because one we know that they signed a 20 year deal with nvidia so that means like whatever whatever system on a chip they use regardless of form factor is from nvidia and it would be Mm -hmm. wild for them to get the processor and gpu from the same company and be like yeah we picked the one that doesn't work with the switch stuff like we don't get me wrong i absolutely think the switch 2 or whatever they call the successor will be backwards compatible right so so i think that my my take right now is that those games like prime 4 like Mm -hmm. whatever bondi namco is working on i think that they will quote unquote be switch games but i think they will be like at this point i would not be surprised if nintendo pulled uh breath of the wild with those games and was like launch window for next console and just threw them that way uh because i i fully expect we have one year left i i can't imagine we have more Mm -hmm. than one year in the tank on the switch Mm -hmm. this is is the year we're gonna hear a lot more rumblings about a successor for sure Right. I mean, it, I mean, we, you know, we, we know, I mean, Tears of the Kingdom is probably going to be kicking off the Switch's more or less final year, right? I mean, we, you know, we know that Prime 4 and Pikmin 4 are, are both coming after Tears of the Kingdom. So, it, I mean, it's true. There is a dwindling amount of time for Nintendo to make a big deal out of this thing. And, and you know, that also comes, same, same argument we had earlier with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Like, they're just running out of time to really hype these things up with the Switch's life cycle presumably winding down. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I definitely hear everything you're saying, and I think there are a lot of reasons to think it's not happening, but I've already OD'd on Hopium at this point for this. So, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to I'm gonna throw a hand grenade into this discussion and say, yes, I'm drawing my line in the sand. I don't know why, but yes, I have hope. I believe that Kid Icarus Uprising Remaster is oh, a I think, thing. I think it's happening. I think it's happening as a cross-gen title at Oh, best. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But But you do think it is happening, though. I, I think it's I think it's happening. I think it's happening cross gen though. Like I don't think okay, it, it may even be next gen. Like at this point. Fair enough. Yeah, I can see that happening. But mm-hmm. I, I do think you know what I'm. I'm yeah. I'm gonna say it. I think it'll happen. And I still have hope that that rumor was referring to Kid Icarus Uprising. So we'll see. I've got everything crossed. I love that game to death. It is tied for my favorite 3DS game of all time. One of my favorite handheld games of all time. So uh, yeah, just make it a hd console port and just really give it a glow up the glow up it deserves and it still has my favorite nintendo villain maybe ever like ever hades is so so great and i want to see more of him so just revive the online play as well oh yes definitely yeah uh oh to answer uh dad offline tied with bravely second that's the other one that i that is my uh Mm -hmm. tied for my favorite 3ds game ever all right daniel what is your uh patron topic this week man my question this week comes from that alpha lion asking when it comes to remakes which of these two camps do you find yourself looking more forward to more often remakes that are more faithful or ones that are more radical 
Faithful remakes borderlining on AAA remasters include Crash, Spyro, New Replicant, Crisis Core, whereas Radical remakes include are Resident Evil 2 and 3, Metroid Samus Returns, and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, the interesting about mm-hmm. there's the interesting point about this is that I do prefer like a more radical remake. Um, looking at this list here that you have RE2 and 3, uh, Metroid 2, Final Fantasy 7, these games are a bit older and the uh, the design of them is a bit outdated. So there's a lot for these games to upgrade upon to make a, a much more radical remake uh, and, and just really reimagine it uh, as much as you've seen like Metroid Samus Returns was a very much a, a broad reimagining of, of Samus, uh, Samus Re- of Metroid 2 back on the Game Boy because there was just so much more you could expand upon. Um, I do enjoy, you know, your, your faithful remakes. Near Replicant was, was lovely uh and 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 tear inducing crisis core that was my first time actually playing crisis core uh i was on the the um the ps5 and um i kind of appreciate that it's faithful to what it was but i still wish that because we have remake coming out uh uh, its trilogy is still releasing they could have done more with that but for me i think i really like how they can reimagine these older titles to kind of line up more with more of a recent design philosophy for these games. Uh, what do you guys think? Man, this is hard. And, and what I think, unfortunately, and I apologize, uh, Alpha Lion, what I think is I'm going to cop have a cop-out answer here and say it depends. Um, because, <laughs> And I know that's a cop-out. I know. I'm sorry. But, uh, well, first I want to say, I think I, I hesitate to call Crisis Core a fate. I mean, it is a faithful remake, but I feel like it's closer to like a radical remake than, than it at first appears. They completely overhauled that battle system. If you go back to the original Crisis True. Core, it feels so different. It, they really mm-hmm. overhauled it in a way that isn't maybe necessarily a super apparent if you haven't played the original or seen the original recently. But with that said, it does depend, right? Because, like, I can't imagine... Like, I love Final Fantasy VII Remake, and, I, and even though I at first thought I wanted something a little bit more faithful, now that I played FF7 Remake... I can't imagine it being anything other than what it is. I love how meta it is. I love that it's surprising me, that it isn't just a beat-for-beat remake of the original story. On the other hand, let's say they were to remake Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is perfect as it is, and I wouldn't want them to radically remake that. I'd want it to be a faithful remake, just with a glow-up, HD2D, for example. So it really does kind of depend on the game. See, I I have... I have to disagree on the Chrono Trigger thing uh, because yeah. I think the HD 2D would would introduce some fundamental differences because there's a lot of uh, stuff in Chrono Trigger that relies on the fixed camera, mm-hmm. and so you would have to redesign parts of the the world itself to account for the fact that you now had more freedom with that camera and that the whole game is shown at a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wouldn't I I I actually would not call an HD 2D version of any RPG like a faithful remake. I would, I would, mm-hmm. I would put that more in like a, I, somewhere in between, like an in between. Well, really, I was thinking more in terms of like radically changing the gameplay and the oh, story sure. and the characters. Sure. That that's kind of more along the lines of what I meant. Like I wouldn't want that. Those oh, I I wouldn't of want those aspects. Of, yeah, agree. Yeah, that's what but I. We're meant. on the yeah. same page on See, that for sure. Just as yeah. you're discussing now, it's hard to pin down as far as between remaster and remake. Is it between gameplay and visuals that we divide these from? Is because like yeah, I would I would want to keep Chrono Trigger as it is, as it, the gameplay, uh, as as that functions, and also you know the story and all that. It, it's mostly. I, I would want to keep a lot of that DNA there as it is, but still kind of see it glowing up, but. But some people want a complete remake. They want to see it reimagined as what it would be like as like a, a, a less than 2D sprite and more of a three-dimensional, closer to Final Fantasy VII Remake kind of style. So it's hard to dis- dis- distinguish remake and remaster in some cases. Yeah, it's tough for me, um, you know, because there, I agree that there are games that I would like to see just completely faithful remakes with better graphics. Like if you gave me Mario 64 with like completely overhauled visuals, like, you know, in the Odyssey engine, I would love that. I, I that game is perfect. Uh, but then I really, really loved what they did with final fantasy seven. I, I think that yeah. FF seven remake was, was incredible. Uh, the story went in interesting new directions and 
I can understand why fans are a little upset. Like some fans are upset by that, but then you still have Final Fantasy VII. Like you could go yeah, back and original. play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I'm going to say that on in a broad sense, I prefer Radical Remakes because I sure. still have the old game to go back and play. Mm -hmm. And this gives me like a newer experience that is different in quantifiable ways from what I played before. And if I don't love it, I still have the original game. Uh, whereas like a remake, you know, like a faithful remake just gives me a new coat of paint on, on a game I played 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I would say broadly speaking, but like, a, you know, there can't be a rule. There's always exceptions. Right. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I think I agree with that in a broad stroke sense, uh, in a broad stroke sense, because the originals are always there. Although they're, you know, they're also depending on the game. Again, there is the argument that some games are not easily accessible on modern platforms. So even though those games do exist, it can be a pain in the ass for some games to to be able to go go you know go back and experience their original versions. So that also kind of factors into the argument. Like a game, like not that this will ever happen, but if we ever got remakes of the original Quintet tr uh, trilogy of, of RPGs on Super Nintendo, Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, Terra Enigma, I don't know that I'd want them to be radically different because those games are not easily accessible on modern platforms, and I love them the way they are. So it really just kind of again it comes down to the game for me and it just depends on so many different factors yeah. so so yeah anything else you want to say on this before we move on i think that's pretty much it yeah all right well then uh my topic this week comes from dgc with a fun question here uh asking do any of you guys share any birthdays with a fictional character and i thought this was fun it stood out to me because i never really considered it and uh, I had to do a little research and, and find out if, if I do. And indeed, I do. And uh, a, lot, a lot of them are some anime characters I don't recognize, but there are a few anime characters I do recognize that I do share uh, my birthday with. My birth birthday, by the way, is September 10th. And it is my great honor to reveal that I share a birthday with the best Sailor Scout, who is, of course, Sailor Mercury. So Sailor Mercury and I share a birthday, the birthday of September 10th, which I think is pretty damn cool. And also, uh, QB Caitlin and all the other Persona fans in our in our audience will be happy to know that I also share a birthday with Aegis from Persona Three. I hope I said that right. I guess Aegis, Aegis. Uh, I just say Aegis in the in the game. Yeah. I guess okay. So uh, I guess and I share a birthday as well. And those are the the big two I would say wow. uh, that I share a birthday with. But those are two pretty awesome characters to share a birthday with. So I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, what about you guys? Nothing. I literally Nothing? don't share a birthday. Like, random anime characters from anime even I haven't seen, apparently. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out how difficult it is to search, apparently, for strictly video game characters' birthdays. Like, if you Google mm -hmm. that, it will give you anime characters' birthdays and only yeah. anime characters' birthdays, which seems wrong. Uh, so, chat, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, my birthday is August 20th, and I couldn't find anything that I recognized from any popular like anime mm -hmm. or or video game like i saw a bunch of animes that i've never i've never heard of but no as far as i'm i'm concerned i came up blank wait what day Damn. was it again august 20th august 20th i did just actually find out okay I, another character i recognize uh brad wong from dead or alive 5 i share a birthday with brad as well so there's that too <coughs> i think as a cop out, everyone shares a birthday with somebody in Animal Crossing. That's uh, true. Very uh, true. <laughs> with like 400 characters at this point. Uh, you share a birthday, um, Steve, with Lopez, who is a smug deer in the Perfect. Animal Crossing <laughs> franchise. My nice. spirit I animal. A, I, I share a birthday in Animal Crossing with Becky, who is a snooty chicken. So. What does that say about me? <laughs> <laughs> now I have to look up Animal Crossing. I have to see what birthdays. Lopez looks like. Let's see. Do it's, I? It's, it looks like a Steve character. I, I, I could see this guy in your town, Steve. Ooh, yeah. He's got like <laughs> eyeshadow on for some reason. It's like blue. Okay. And... I dig him. So my I dig him. Animal Crossing birthdays are Pecan and Rio, neither of whom I'm familiar with because I'm not like a huge Animal Crossing guy. Let's see. Pecan is a cute oh, squirrel. Pecan. She's like a cute squirrel. Um, and then Rio is a very, uh, like a very fabulous flamingo ostrich, oh, ostrich yeah. with star cheeks, they're... star shaped cheeks. Cool. I think they're a new character that came with the most recent wave of amiibo cards for like oh, okay. five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're a new character. Well, these are, these so, are yeah, two yeah. cute 
uh, villagers to share a birthday mm -hmm. with. I'm so I'm I'm living large here. I got Pecan, Rio, Sailor Mercury, Brad Wong. Dang. Oh, damn. I'm and and, and I and, and I guess so. I got a good got a good birthday for video game share, anime characters. I'm yeah. gonna share a birthday with a Sailor Senshi, man. That's I know, right? And it's just yeah. happened to be my favorite one too. My uh, Mercury's uh, the best. Uh, it's okay to be wrong. No, Mer Mercury is the best. I completely oh my God, agree. I'm gonna say Makoto sailor jupiter is for me so I, you know what that's, search that's man ds agrees with you and our youtube chat said false best scout is jupiter so that's where we stand so yeah i have my i have my crew <laughs> yeah um i mentioned this before when before we started uh ever since awakening fire emblem characters have had their own canonical birthdays and up to this point i still don't have someone who lands on december 9th the closest one is Virian from awakening december 10th um i don't think i share anything in common with Virian, but we <laughs> almost have a birthday together. And well, you then... just... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, that was pretty much it. Well, you just made two new mortal enemies in Master of Hamsters and Steamed Zing because they both... So Master of Hamsters shares a birthday with Shiro from Fire Emblem Fates, and Steam Zing shares a birthday with Obero from Fire Emblem Fates. Oh, okay. Very so, nice. So, yeah. Yeah, but, uh... I... I, I one day maybe 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 with uh, engaged there'll be a birthday that I line up with and that's not the main character because here's count. hoping, here's <laughs> hoping yeah we got to get you on the board Steve you gotta we oh, gotta wait. find a I oh. share a birthday with Olivia from Fire Emblem Awakening there you I, go I found a oh, spreadsheet oh, okay oh yeah there you are so Steve, all right now I have like a Fire Emblem, have birthday, Fire Emblem character <laughs> I... What was your date again, Ash? I have a whole list here. September 10th. I'm looking at a... September 10th. Doesn't look like... At least the list I'm looking quite. at. Yeah, not quite. Closer to, would also, be Azama. Also, I Ash, I googled Sailor Senshi birthdays, and my search reveals that you share a birthday with Mercury rather than Mars. Oh, I said Mercury. Oh, I yeah. thought you said Mars for some Oh, reason. no, no, no. Sailor Mercury is my favorite and the best Sailor Scout. Yes, you are for correct. Sure. Yes. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> no, I said Mercury for sure. Okay. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> no no worries man no worries well they, yeah, i thought that was just a fun uh fun little thought exercise finding out who, which yeah. characters we share a birthday with but thank you uh for all these topics and once again as a reminder uh we have a patreon uh, patreon.com slash gv gaming and this is a perk specifically for our uh, producers and above so definitely check us out over on patreon if you can and uh, we do have a few more super chats to read out and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, head out to our also patron exclusive post show so first off, we have Jessica with $5. Thank you, Jessica. Hey, y'all. Haven't been here in a while, so it's good to be back. It's been rough for me recently, so this is a much-needed escape for me. Love y'all. Well, we love you, too, and we're glad you're back. Yeah. And uh, sorry Welcome to back. hear you've had it rough recently, but Thank we're you. happy that we can make things a little bit better for you uh, while, we're, while we're doing what we do. So thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, Chip Damage Mike is back. I haven't seen your name in a while, Mike, uh, with $10. Thank you very much. Hey, GBG, I just wanted to say, due to all your praise of the Xenoblade series, I decided to play through the series. Just finished uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition yesterday, and I must say, 10 out of 10. Thank you all for the great content. That's well, awesome. thank you, yeah. Mike. Super glad that you're, you've been brought into the Xenoblade fold. I hope you are playing through these games uh, with the English voice track. I play I, I play a lot of games with the Japanese voice track, but you got to go with the English voice track in the Xenoblade games. It is unlike anything else you've heard. It's So hope you're doing that. But enjoy two and three. You're in for an amazing ride, seriously. Next up is Trace Hall with $5. Thank you very much, Trace. Hope your night is going well, you guys. And was wondering if you were going to discuss how uh, Herpa, she stinks. <laughs> I, he got you, dude. He did. I don't I don't even know. You got, I, you got, got man. I, I thought I got, for sure you were going to catch I, on. I, would, I didn't even read it before. I just read it. I didn't look at that before I read it. So, yeah, Who, who is me. her? <laughs> yeah. I, th this reminds me of another one that got me. <laughs> what? There was another one that got me. Uh, there was someone's name that I read out, and it got me as I read it out. And I can't remember what it was, but it was really funny and totally got me. You got me. Good job, Trace. You got me. Thank you for that. <laughs> and thank you for the donation. Seriously. Uh, next up is Switch Realm with $4.99. Thank you. Are you guys planning on having a seventh member? I think I could be your lucky number seven. LOL. Just started watching you guys, and you guys are dope. Well, thank you very much, thank Switch you. Realm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know what? If if we ever have the money to hire a seventh person, yes, that is that is the goal. We want to become big enough to be able to hire more people and grow our staff. We're just not there yet. Um, but that's the idea. So, you know, anyone out there who wants to invest in us, we're here. And we'd love to grow our staff. So. That will forever be the baby of this family. 
<laughs> well, maybe not. I mean, hopefully not forever, because that's the idea is we do want to grow our staff. So yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. But that's that is the overall goal. So uh, oh, here come the hype police. We haven't heard them in a while. It's been a while since they've been on an episode wow. of GVG. Cast. It's been, a, it's been we've been in peacetime. Yeah. All right. Our good friend uh, Shellshock Prime with five dollars. Thank you. Uh, in 2002, Wizards of the Coast eliminated the 15-plus division for Pokemon TCG trading card game when they had the rights to get the kids to play Magic. They lost the license after that. Well, Wizards, they're they are just they are batting 100, aren't they? They, they seem to do a lot of shitty things. Uh, crap, no. Uh, uh, you can say shitty. shitty. It's been more than I know, 15 I'm kidding. seconds. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, uh, wow. Wow. Wizards suck. I, I again, I don't play D and D or real wizards are general. cool. Real wizards, Co yes. coastal wizards apparently are <laughs> are terrible. Yeah, so I did not know that they're so shady. I had no idea. Um, Kane Woolley with five New Zealand dollars. Thank you very much, Kane. Hello, hope all is well. Been playing through my one thousand plus game backlog. Currently mm -hmm. playing Tales of Arise. Great and pretty different to previous entries. Over a thousand games. I mean, look, That's I got a, a I got a big backlog. I, I don't know if it's a thousand plus games. Yeah, we're we're all gonna die someday. Maybe just like abandon some of those. Did you, yeah. Did you also add another zero? What's going on tonight? What? what... <laughs> Every crazy getting tonight. wild. Seven hundred hours in Xenoblade Three, a thousand plus game backlog. Jeez. Like, I played like two hundred hours of Switch last year. <laughs> I can't imagine seven hundred yeah. on one game. Me neither. But uh, good on you. Like that, you definitely got your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monte Cristo Smith to answer your question really quickly, Derek, uh, he was here last week on the show, uh, but he's just sick today. He's recovering. He's got a bit of a cold, but he'll be back. He's just sick today. So we're giving him a rest. Uh, cutie Caitlin, our good friend, cutie Caitlin with $10. Thank you so much. Ash, you're a dingus. I just ordered myself a switch OLED for $200. I'm also mostly a dock player, but I played a bit more handheld lately and geez, a bigger screen with no bezel will be nice. You are in for a treat, Caitlin. It is Sounds such nice. a gorgeous screen. And and as you know, I am also primarily a docked player, but I have been going out of my way to play more on handheld because it really is that stunning. So yeah, you're you're in for a, a treat. Being converted slowly but surely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then finally, our last super chat of the day, uh, Trace Hall is back with $10. Ash, honey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I forgive you this time. Just this once, I will forgive you. It's okay, but but not not anymore. This is your one. This is your one uh, mulligan that you get. After this, no more forgiveness. So, no, seriously, thank you very much, and uh, thank you everyone for watching episode forty of the GVG Cast. This has been a blast as always. Uh, we love doing this show every week with you guys. So, uh, seriously, thank you all so much. Uh, as a reminder, we do have a Patreon, patreoncom gaming. Check us out over there. Uh, but as as customary for uh, the end of every GVG cast, we have, have to give a special shout out to all of our patrons at the producer tier and above for helping to make everything we do happen. Because without you, we could not keep the lights on. So thank you so, so very much. And as always, we have to give an extra special thank you to all of our patrons at the executive producer tier and above. And those fine, wonderful, amazing, stupendous folks include Brandon Bovia, Cutie Caitlin, Fangs, Z Patty, just Brian, Sky Blue Flames, Eastman 23, Adam O'Sullivan, Richard Herrera, Logan Daniel, The D Pad, Vesmio, Waffle King, Critter XD, Joy Content, Angel Martinez, Vedron, Vinny Yao, Blindman, Azran127, Black King, Pagrima, Geller, Joseph Rutkin, Titus Malvolio, Geeky Griffin, Lucky Wonderfish, Kyle, Wataniac, Top Dog 23100, Young Ben Kenobi, Doug Shomix, Andrew Medeiros, Brady Power, Darchi, Becca, Killamox, Eddie B, Michael McCaw, Matthew Wong, Goron Amber CPHT, Too Much Spaghetti, Bane 400, Askeron 809, Ryaner, Nathan Steele, Spicy Atanda, Raiden Clouds, The Game Orb, Super Gamer Dude 101, Grantles, Ravelox, Synchro Lord, Rosa Pardo Bowling. Hi, Mom. Mega Amster, Darksteel01, Jason Uloa, Jaden Buck, Cystic Warrior29, DJ Jurassic, Super Dink Awesome Unicorn Guy, Derek, Colin, Blaystar25, Mumbling Yeti, Cameron Sharp, Keel, Moon Knight, Brendan Hesse, Noah Fitterer, Calvin Atkinson, Brainchild, the entire state of Wisconsin, 
<laughs> Jim Waitlin, Long Boy Shiggy, Andy Mind P, Ad, Kyle the Monarch, Dat Alpha Lion, Lord Metarex, Kyle Gamer and Barry Rookie, Salad Dinner, Blaze Collard, Eric, Turbo, DGC, Cat EV Person 5, Lady Maxillary, and last but certainly not least, Dr. Ryan. Thank you all so much. It is such a pleasure and an honor to read out that list almost every week. Thank you all so much for everything you do. We are headed off to our Patreon exclusive post show. So again, if you want to get in on that action, check us out over on patreon.com slash gvgaming. But even if you can't, if you just like and subscribe right here on YouTube, every little bit truly does help. Thank you all so much. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Good night and good vibes. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. I'll see you soon on Good Advice Arcade at Twitch at official GVG. Till we meet again.